Okay, I'm now signed on to Instagram and YouTube. <laughs> welcome, welcome everybody. This is going to be a live review tonight of the season. Well, no, not the season finale, but that was last week. But the reunion part one review of Mary to Medicine. So come on in, grab your drinks, whatever you like, whatever you partake. Uh, wine, burr, liquor, fruit juice, lay laid, um, <laughs> tea, coffee, <laughs> whatever your sipping pleasure is. <laughs> and so you can join me tonight. Make sure you um, click the like button on your way in. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. That is for my YouTube viewers. Um, those of you on Instagram, my YouTube is Tanya's Primetime TV Media Reviews. And my other channel is Tanya Knows No Limit. And for those of you on YouTube, my Instagram is Tanya Primetime TV. All one word. So let's jump right into it. I know it's late. Some of us have to get up early in the morning and get that good old word from the Lord <laughs> at church tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm going to um, try to get through this review. I, man, I ain't even going to lie. I'm late today. And it's mainly because I can't keep my eyes off other people's YouTube videos. It's like so much going on in these YouTube streets. I just don't know which way is up, which way is down. I mean, people is throwing shade on every YouTube corner. I just was like, oh my God, I know I need to get off these live videos so I can work on my own video. But anywho, anywho, Better late than never, right? <laughs> so come on in, click the like button. Let's get started on this good old review of Married to Medicine um, season, is it season seven? Season six, reunion part one, anyway. <clears throat> but um, first I want to say this Married to Medicine um, reunion part one, uh, whew, mm, almost slept through it. Honestly, honestly, um, the first half of the episode, I should have just skipped it because it really didn't start getting anywhere and getting lit, you know, to like the second half of the show. That was like the pre-show before the show. So anywho, I don't know. Um, bro, were they playing with us? <laughs> but it does look like next episode next week is going to be off the shizzle. So I'm looking forward to that one. But as far as reunion part one. Um, they did re revisit some things, um, some moments, of course, as they normally do. Uh, one of those moments was when Simone kept accusing Contessa of using her breast surgery as a reason to stay away from the group, um, you know, the group of ladies, because I guess she feels like, you know, it's obvious she's trying to just avoid Toya. And I have said several times, you know, over the this past season, that I just really honestly believe that Contessa um, just wanted to be at her best before she, you know, jumped back in to hanging around those ladies. I mean, she had just had a double mastectomy. And then she had to have her breasts, you know, after she had the double mastectomy, she had to have them redone again. So then she had to have a breast job. I mean, she was in a lot of pain. You know, she really wasn't trying to take any of her medicine because, you know, her family has an, a, her dad has a dick addiction to drugs um, or had, I don't know if he's still, you know, going through that or not, but I know he had an addiction to drugs. And I guess she was afraid that, you know, if she'd be popping too many of them pain pills, that she would get an addiction too. So she was basically just popping probably Tylenol and ibuprofen, you know, trying to get through that pain. So who wants to be dealing with all of that and then trying to deal with the ladies, you know, at the same time when oftentimes all they do is stir up a lot of unnecessary drama. So, you know, hey, Terrence Info for you. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing tonight? <laughs> we just discussed it, Married to Medicine, Reunion Part 1. Um, I'm actually discussing, like, Reunion Part 
<laughs> Big, I don't know. The first half of the reunion, I just, like I said, I just, I was like, let's go. When are we going to get to the good part? Get down to the good part. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you very kindly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, But yeah, Contessa, she, I don't think that she, I don't know why she thought that she was trying to avoid Toya. I mean, even though they got into it, you know, on several occasions. But I don't think Contessa, for one bit, is scared of Toya. I mean, do y'all? I don't know where... <laughs> I, I don't know where Simone gets that idea. Like, I don't know. They used to be really, really good friends. So, you know, they fell out. They stopped hanging around to each other. But I, I still never understood why Simone thought that she was just trying to avoid Toya. But anywho, I, I don't know. And she called her a liar and a fraud. But you know what? After watching this whole season, oh, girl, you better be driving safe now. Drive safe now. <laughs> I don't want you to put my name on no ticket or nothing. <laughs> it was Tanya's fault. Tanya's prime time. She owed me some money on this ticket. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Contessa, I mean, she called her, Simone called her a liar and a fraud. But after going through this whole season and then the reunion, I didn't came to the conclusion. And y'all tell me if I'm reaching. Um, but, I was beginning to get the feeling that Simone, um, <clears throat> let's, let's, let me see, let me see, let me read the, read the comments. Contessa has had a lot of muscle mass. I don't think she's scared of Toya either. She just don't want, right, right. That's what I think too. I think, I think Contessa can get with Toya. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, don't sleep on them. Uh, I know s smaller people don't like to be called skinny. So I'm gonna just keep just say don't 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 sleep on those smaller frame people. <laughs> Cause I didn't see some get with a big person. I I I didn't see them. I didn't see them. Shoot. Be like David and Goliath. The bigger you are, the harder you fall. <laughs> but, <laughs> but okay, all right. <laughs> Yep, I got you. I got you. <laughs> but seriously, like, do y'all think that um that Simone uh was trying to downplay Contessa's surgery? You know, she was kind of like treating it as if she just went and had a boob job. Like, you know, her boobs was kind of small. She just went in, got a boot, got a boob job, you know. Wanted her boobs to look better, bigger, you know, for whatever reason. When she actually went through a double mastectomy and didn't have to have, you know, her breasts, you know, redone. And she kept like downplaying it. She was saying all through the season and e all through the season and even tonight that Contessa doesn't have to keep reminding them that she had surgery. I mean, she was like, we ain't got amnesia. So why do you keep bringing it up? And I mean, the fact that Contessa, you know, her mother had died from breast cancer. Um, and the fact that her father is battling right now prostate cancer. That alone should make, well, I would think, okay, I would think it would make Simone a little more empathetic you know, especially since she's a she herself is a doctor. I, I don't know. And again, I don't know what it is about Contessa that makes Simone smell fear because I, I I can see right through it. She is not afraid of her, even with her loudest range, because that girl can get loud. I, she is the last person I want to get in an argument. If I get in an argument with Simone, it's going to be over text. <laughs> or <laughs> on Facebook in my inbox. <laughs> I'm like, I don't care what you say. And she's going to be on the other side screaming, making all these faces and everything. Like, no, that girl talks too loud. I can't argue with her. She ain't about to blow out my eardrums. <laughs> she is much too loud. Much too loud. Even Andy said it tonight. Um, you was the last person I want to get into an argument with. And hey, she got a big mouth on that little body. But anyway, um, <laughs> I don't think uh 
you know, when, when Simone kept trying to call Contessa a liar and a fraud, it was like, she just straight up lied on the reunion show. Did y'all see Simone when she was going back and forth? Like, first, it's, I don't ever drink around this set of ladies. <laughs> because you can't trust them. You said they keep it real. No one wants to talk about things like that because people start to cry and use it against them as a weapon. So it don't make you comfortable enough to speak on the issue. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. True. True. I understand. I had a mom die from cancer. I, I get it. I, I, I get it. <laughs> I agree. I agree. A lot of times I wasn't answering the phone. And people was like, we just checking on you. We just trying to see if you need anything. And you get tired of going over and over and over and over and over again. Saying the same thing, you know, to different people. So I was like, I'm going to just put a post on Facebook to everyone. I will hit y'all up when I hit y'all up. <laughs> That's how I went. <laughs> but when she was up there talking about she didn't drink around the ladies, I'm like, hold up. I've been watching this show for a whole how many seasons? And you're going to sit right there on that stage and say you don't ever drink around them ladies because you can't trust them? I was like, hold up, wait a minute, child, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a doggone minute. You've been drinking around these ladies since season one. What are you talking about? But then she backtracked, and I guess she tried to correct herself, you know, after, after Andy and Contessa start bringing up, you know, different events, different situations, different gatherings, you know, where she partook in the alcohol. I'm like, what is it? Is she drunk now? <laughs> I was, <laughs> you know that, come on now, you know. The reunions, they be having drinks. I'm sure they got some champagne, some Stella Rosa, some Burrs, some liquor. I mean, anything you can imagine at those reunions, along with all other kind of treats and fruits and everything. Just, you know, you know. But um, then she changed it up and she was like, I don't get drunk around this group of ladies. And I'm like, again, what are you talking about? Because I could swear. Sometimes that girl be seeming like she lit. I ain't even gonna lie. Sometimes it be seeming like she lit. When she be going from zero to 1,000, not zero to 100, she be going zero to 1,000 and 2.5. And I'm and yelling at the top of her lungs like Simone be yelling at the top of her lungs. I don't know how her kids and her husband can deal with it. I really don't know. I really don't know how her kids and her sons can deal with her mouth when she gets loud, when she gets on one. I, mm, that would drive me crazy. <laughs> that would drive me absolutely crazy. But anyway, anyway, um, so again, you know, she was getting really, really like defensive, contradicting herself at the same time and calling Contessa bitches. Like, bitch, don't misconstrue what I'm trying to say. Like, but you said I don't drink around these ladies. You said that out of your own mouth. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> y'all let me know what y'all think about that. But, um,. I don't know why she has to yell so loud to get her point across. That is so irritating. I don't I don't know how anybody deals with that on a day-to-day -day basis. But anywho, anywho. Um, Contessa, you know, she told her again um, that nobody in this group is going to keep her away from nobody in this group. And I said what I said. <laughs> but I have one question for y'all. Okay, if any of you... It is, Sarah. I'm like, I don't know why I keep watching this show. I mean, it's probably because it's one of the few black reality shows out there, you know, with a group of ladies. I mean, we do have the housewives and we, you know, the basketball wives and, you know, so I don't know. But anywho, it be giving me life sometimes, though. Sometimes it gives me life. <laughs> But if there's any doctors out there, any nurses that's watching, please raise your hand. Because I got a question for y'all. 
Um, now, did y'all see the see the uh point when Andy was reading all questions, and a fan had wrote in a question for Heavenly, and she said, and I quote. I die every time Tawanda Braxton comes in to get her teeth clean because all y'all do is talk about sex. <laughs> and it's true. Like, how many times has she done Tawanda's teeth on um set? I think maybe, hmm, maybe two or maybe three times, you know, over the seasons, maybe three times give or take. I don't know. But Andy was like, is that against the HIPAA laws? And I'm sitting there thinking like, I never thought about that. I never thought about that. You know, I'm just thinking they on the show, they keep in, they girlfriends, they, you know, and I'm like, okay, I'm thinking, um, doctors, I'm sure. I don't know. I mean, is it against HIPAA laws? That's what I want to know. Like, was they joking? Was Andy for real? I'm not a doctor, <laughs> so I don't know, but I want to know. Like, I think if it's pertaining to the patient, I thought that it might be okay for a doctor to speak to their patient about sex. I mean, other than when you're going in to maybe have your annual done or you're going in for a uh, routine physical or to have kids, or if you're having problems um, trying to have kids, trying to have sex. I mean, I know there's certain times when that's what you're there to do, is talk to your doctor about your sexual activities or lack of. <laughs> but um, is it against HIPAA laws if you're not having one of those moments? Like, I, I, I don't know. I just would think that a doctor is allowed to talk to their patient about anything if their patient uh, brings it up. But, but, pertaining to this particular episode, um, when they had, you know, did the recap or they went back and showed the scene again, um, Heavenly did say on the reunion show that Tawanda brought up the subject. But, but, looking back at the clip, <laughs> Looking back at the clip, Heavenly asked Tawanda, was she having sex? That was like the first words they exchanged. Now, unless they edited out a prior conversation, you know, that Tawanda started regarding sex, it did look like Heavenly brought it up. Like she started the convo with her patient, Tawanda. But, you know, again, even as a dentist, I mean, even as a dentist, Heavenly's a dentist. Um, I would think if a patient brings up, okay, like, okay, she's a dentist. <laughs> you saw them joking around about oral sex, right? <laughs> so, like, if she's a dentist and she's cleaning her teeth, um, is it against HIPAA laws if she was like, okay, are you having oral? Are you taking care of your teeth? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, it is, if if you're a dentist and your patient brings it up, are you supposed to be like, oh, I'm sorry, but you know what? I can't talk to you on that subject matter, but here's a card to somebody you can speak with. You know, I mean, what do you do? I don't know. Anyway, if there's a doctor out there or a nurse or somebody who's watching, please, you know, let us know. <laughs> let us know. But, um... They were just sitting around chatting, you know, like old friends, you know, every time she comes to see her. So I was also thinking like, okay, this might be your patient, but they are also very, very good friends. So I think, you know, I'm going to give Heavenly the benefit of the doubt. That's your good girlfriend. Um, they sitting around chatting like they would normally do on any normal occasion. So, you know, I'm going to get her the benefit of the doubt. I don't think she just normally talks about sex on a regular basis with her patients. So, I don't know. I know he Heavenly a little cray-cray sometimes, but yeah, I don't think she'd be doing all that. But anyway, um, then they brought up, you know, Heavenly's on ongoing, I repeat, ongoing spiritual journey. Um... I'm glad, again, that Heavenly took that trip to Miami. You know, when she went to Miami, um, she wanted to deal with, you know, her past, 
her childhood, some things that she went through, you know, to try to get some closure because she, uh, well, her doctor, Dr. K, um, he believed that she should go back to her stumping grounds because there's just some, some closure that she needs to probably help her with the way she behaves on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, her communication skills and your mama this, your mama that, you know, skills. Again, <laughs> the only person I have seen, and I don't know how many times that is a grown, a whole grown woman with a family and kids and a husband and a career that goes around talking about your mama when they get mad is heavenly. That's the only one. <laughs> That's the only one. Even in my personal life, I have yet any time... I don't know how many years it's been since I heard somebody say, yo, mama, I think I was like, I don't know, in my early 30s, you know, when I last time I heard somebody around my age, you know, say something like that. But anyway, 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 she's still, she's still growing. She's still growing. But how do y'all feel about Heavenly's growth or lack of? Like, do y'all feel like, I don't know. It's like she's been seeing this therapist forever. I don't know how many times a week she sees him. I don't know how much she pays him, but this is Dr. K. You know, he's a well-known therapist, so I'm thinking that bro ain't too cheap. I mean, at least 110, 125, at least an hour. At least. Probably more like 200. <laughs> you know, probably like 200, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But sometimes I feel like she is making some real changes to her life. And then the next thing I know, next thing you know, like I said again, she's getting mad, getting upset, getting into arguments. And the first thing she does when her and Mariah get into it is talk about her mama. Like, why is it always, Mar why is it always Mariah's mama, though? I mean, she don't talk about uh, quads. Uh, mama, she don't talk about Toya's mama, Simone's mama, Jackie's mama. She don't talk about none of them, none of them, <laughs> none of them mamas. <laughs> it's always Mariah's. Miss Lucy, Mama Lucy. She's always talking about Mama Lucy. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anywho, anywho, maybe she's scared of the rest of their mamas. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But, I mean, do y'all really feel like she's growing? I mean, or she's just stagnant? Or, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's like, it's like one minute I'm like, oh, she's growing. She's apologizing. She's, you know, letting her feelings out and, you know, trying to relate to other people. And then the next thing you know, she's ready to swing on somebody. Like, punch them dead in the throat. Dead in the throat. <laughs> So I don't know, but I do think she needs to keep seeing Dr. K, uh, because Dr. K is not through with her yet, and God ain't either. So they both got, they both still got a little bit of work to work on, you know, Dr. Heavenly. <laughs> but then, you know what? Okay. Um, remember Mariah had told Heavenly that her husband, Damon, was cheating on her. Um, she never came with receipts. Even Toya told her, if you don't have no receipts, if it's just hearsay, why are you even bringing it up? If you ain't got no receipts, you shouldn't just be repeating stuff like that. I mean, and it, it, it's true. You shouldn't be just repeating stuff like that. I mean, this man is on TV. Uh, this show plays everywhere. And you out there talking about on national TV, um, he's out there cheating on his wife. And you don't have no receipts. But not only that, but then at the reunion show, she goes on to say that he was also coming on to her mama, to Miss Lucy. Heavenly. <laughs> Heavenly had me rolling. Oh, my God. She was like, ah, okay, I give up. I give up. Tap. I tap, I tap out, I tap out. Game over. If my man wants Miss Lucy, 
then he can have him some Miss Lucy because if I if I can't keep my man from somebody like Miss Lucy, did y'all hear the shade? Did y'all hear the shade? <laughs> but Mariah didn't say nothing. And I guess she said her mama was there somewhere. I don't I don't remember seeing her mama. Maybe she was sitting out in the crowd um somewhere watching from the sidelines, you know, in the cut somewhere. I didn't see Miss Lucy, but you know, she said she was there. And so again, where the receipt said, Mariah? No receipts. She was like, oh, she really did. She really did. You know, he, he really did. The first time they came over my house, he tried to come on to my mama. I don't know. I don't know. The first time a man and his wife comes to your house, he hits on your mother. I just can't, I can't picture Dame, I just can't picture him doing something like that. You know, and Dame, he could be fooling all of us because he looks so innocent like a little child. I don't know why she talking about me. I don't know why she say I cheat on my wife. I love my wife. That's, that's him. That's him. I ain't done nothing to her. That's him. But no, for real, for real. I don't think he. I don't think he's cheating on heavily. I don't know. And heavily is like, you know what? He's never gave me reason. I have no reason to believe that my husband has ever, ever cheated on her. And that means a lot. That means a lot. But then again, but then again, there are men who go out there and have a whole entire other family, another whole family. Kids, house, car, dog, white picket fence, and everything. And the wife be like, how did I miss that? How, how did I miss that? So, you know, but, you know, I'm going to get Damon the benefit of doubt. I'm gonna, she ain't got no receipts. Even, even her mama was there. And then she was talking about, well, I really don't want to talk about it, Andy, because my mother's here. And I don't want to disrespect my mother. Can y'all tell me how she would have disrespected her mom if she would have said, Mom, did this man come on to you? Did he try to flirt with you? Did he try to take you home, Miss Lucy? <laughs> how is that disrespecting your mama? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but, but, she didn't have no receipts. At all, as far as him cheating, she didn't have no receipts at all. As far as him hitting on her mama, Miss Lucy, um, but when she was talking to Quad, oh my God, it was like she almost had some receipts. Like, okay, first I'm like, okay, I'm gonna dismiss all Mariah's claims. Until proof surfaces, you know, innocent until proven guilty. I'm going to dismiss all of Mariah's claims. But one thing they were not lying about tonight was how that no matter how many times a week Heavenly visits her doc her therapist, Dr. K, she always seems to deflect, you know, upon others whenever she gets called out on her behavior. Now, that's facts. <laughs> That's facts. And even when they was talking about it, she was like, but you're not perfect either, Jackie. You're doing it again. <laughs> you're doing it again. She was like, I know. I'm still growing. I'm still growing. <laughs> but you know what? The subject that I wanted them to hit on the most was the mess that was in all the blogs, you know, regarding Quad sleeping around with Heavenly's brother-in-law. Um, Quad still insists that she never slept with her ex bestie, which is Mariah, you know, with Mariah's brother in law. Now, did y'all see Mariah's eyes like start to tear up when they was going back and forth and they was arguing, you know, over that situation, over her allegedly, Quad allegedly sleeping with uh, Mariah's sister's husband, Mariah's brother in law? 
she looked like she was really about to cry. Like this was really upsetting her. Um, she was like, you were my best friend and you slept with my brother-in-law. You disrespected our relationship. You disrespected my sister. Um, and it, hey, it seemed like this time she had receipts. I'm like, first, uh, right. You just keep throwing out all these accusations, you know, and no receipts, no follow-up, nothing. But then when her and Quad kept going back and forth, she was like, you know what, Andy, what did she say? I swear to God, I thought she was about to say, oh, my mama next. <laughs> she was like, I swear on oh, my life, on oh, my hood, Andy. Quad was messing with my brother-in-law. Me and my sis went over her house to confront her because she didn't believe it. And when they went over there to confront her, Quad answers the door in her brother-in-law's T-shirt. That's what Mariah said. In her brother-in-law's T-shirt. Now, I guess she can determine, you know, her brother-in-law's T-shirt from another man's T-shirt. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but you know what? It didn't stop there. She said she also smelled like her brother-in-law and smelled like his stuff. I, I'm thinking that Quad, that Mariah was trying to say she smelled like they had just had relations or something, you know, relations. Uh, but why would Quad... I don't know if she knew Mariah was coming over or if she just answered the door. But either way, if she did, if Mariah just ran up and rung her doorbell out the blue, I'm sure she probably would have looked out the window, looked at the peephole. Who's there? Who's calling? You know, and why would you answer the door in your man's T-shirt if his wife and his sister-in-law is at the front door? I don't know. I don't know, but but Mariah was she was darn near crying, and she acted like you know she was telling truths. I don't know. She called quite a nasty witch. She was like, "You nasty!" Did you? She was like, Ooh, "Snarled on you, you nasty witch." <laughs> now I don't know, y'all. I don't know, but remember, you know what? <laughs> this was around the time they said. They said this was around the time that Quad, you know, she was about to marry Greg. Um, they had got into a horrible fight, like a horrible fight. Quad ended up getting uh, getting arrested. And do we even know yet why exactly they were fighting? And why exactly did Quad get arrested? I mean, if I remember correctly, I think they both was putting their paws on each other. But in the preview of next week's reunion part two, which I think is going to be absolutely lit, Gregory was accusing Quad of pulling a knife on him. And Quad said something about him slamming her on the doggone flow. Um, again, the accusations of her sleeping around with her Bestie's brother-in-law was said to be around the same time that Quad got arrested. So a lot of people are saying that the reason why they got into it was because Gregory found out that Quad was messing around with Mariah's brother-in-law. Allegedly. Allegedly. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> But I'm thinking unless Mariah brings that doggone t-shirt uh, that Quad was sleeping in, I don't know. We need some receipts because Mariah just be making, throwing accusations left, right, left, right. I'm not going to call her a liar, but you got to have receipts when you making those type of allegations, you know? Um, and that seems to be the issue going around on YouTube, by the way. As I was saying in the beginning of my video, I just been so late on my uh, own reviews and stuff because I cannot keep my eyes off these other videos out here. Like every other video is about people not having receipts on YouTube, people talking about everybody on YouTube, people on each other's chat talking stuff about, oh Lord, it's so much.
It's so much. I just try to sit in the cut. I just try to sit in the cut with my Santa hat on. With my Santa hat on. <laughs> I, I, I'm just going to stay on the porch. I just stay on the porch. But anyway, anyway, next week, reunion part two is going to be lit. I can feel it. And then did you see when Mariah's husband, Aiden, um, he was like, were they in a bathroom or were they in a dressing room or somewhere when he was like yelling at his wife, Mariah, and he was talking about something about somebody messing with his family or I can't wait. I can't wait, because this part one, they should have just ran all that together, part one and part two, because again, the first half of part one, I was not even interested in, they talking about their kids, talking about having sex talks with their kids, and all this kind of stuff, I mean, whatever, talking about, um, uh, Simone and Cecil, how are y'all doing now? Oh, don't nobody care. <laughs> don't nobody care. Shoot, we trying to hear about uh, <laughs> we trying to hear about Quag getting body slammed on that flow. That's what I <clears throat> fix my hat. That's what we... you see that. Corn huskers, corn huskers, Midwest chick, y'all. Anyway, <laughs> let me get off this live. I need to get in the bed. I really do. I got um a cake I have to make early in the morning. Oh, my God. Early in the morning. You know what? Let me see if I can show y'all something. <clears throat> oh, I will try to show y'all something. Let's see, this is, um, hmm, okay, people on Instagram, you won't be able to see it, that's for sure. I'm going to try to show you guys the cake. Remember when I was on live last night, and I did the um, black ink, and I was telling y'all, I had to get up early in the morning and um, make a cake. For a little child, a little girl, a little girl. Let me make this fit. Transform. Stretch the screen. Okay, that's better. All right. Let me show y'all. There's my little notes for my life. <clears throat> Let me show y'all um, the little cake that I made for the little precious girl. Okay, here it is. I'll be posting my little cakes and stuff in different Facebook groups that I'm in. Um, <clears throat> here's the picture of the little girl's name. I, let me make sure I pronounce it right. It's, uh, it says it's T-E apostrophe V-O-N-A. So a six-year-old little girl, her name is Tavana or Tavana. I, I want to say maybe Tavana. I don't know. I don't know because the person didn't tell me that most time I communicate with my customers, it's in inbox text and they text me the little girl's name. It was a grandma and she was um, <clears throat> ordering the cake for her granddaughter, her cute little granddaughter. And she uh, wanted a troll theme cake because she was having a troll theme birthday party. So anywho, um, this is what I came up with. Um, that's the front of the cake. Well, not the front, but you know, the top of the cake. And it's a sheet cake, as you can tell. Um, that's the front of the cake. And <clears throat> did I get the back of the cake? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Here we go. Or maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Let me see. Okay, I'm going to go over here to my Tanya's Delights. I'm in all these cooking groups, y'all. I think uh, maybe I got too many screens up. 
Let me see here. Let's try this one. Okay, let me close. Let me try it again. Chrome. <clears throat> okay, let's see. All right, face book. Fake book. Fake book. That's a lot of people call Facebook. <clears throat> oh, there's somebody's party. Somebody had a party tonight. I didn't get to go to the party tonight. I was invited to the party tonight, but I had to work tonight at the nursing home. Then I had to come home and do my live. And then I have to get up early, like early in the morning, like early in the morning to do um, somebody ordered a German chocolate cake. Um, and I have church tomorrow. Then I have to be at work again after church. So I had to, uh, I didn't go to the party tonight, but anyway, okay. Here's the cake. This is the, the pic that I was trying to show you guys. <coughs> That's the, uh, side view of the cake. And that's the top of the cake. And the little girl really, 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 really loved it. I got um, tagged in a post on Facebook saying that she really liked it. Um, let's see. The cake that I was telling you about the other day that I did. <clears throat> Here's one of them. Strawberry currant shortcake. This was for a community event. You know, they were feeding the elderly people. Um, gave them like a pre-Christmas dinner. Uh, they had caterers. I was the dessert person. That's one of the cakes I made. And that's the other cake that I made. This is just a white cake. The other one was a strawberry crunch shortcake cheesecake. So that's the two cakes I made yesterday. Um, then this cake right here. I made this for my nephew's, uh, Sunday dinner last week. He invited me over to his house for Sunday dinner. Um, but yeah, I've been real busy doing parties and everything. I had a party last weekend. This picks from the party. It was a black and gold party, 50th wedding anniversary. They had ordered my famous strawberry crunch shortcake, um, that everybody loves oh so well. And chocolate covered, uh, Rice Krispie treats, um, chocolate covered strawberries, chocolate covered pretzels. Um, she ordered cupcakes. She ordered a sheet cake. I mean, they wanted it all. So I did the entire dessert table for the 50th birthday party. So that was cool. But yeah. And then here's some more of my picks that I've done lately over the last few weeks, few months. But anywho, <clears throat> anywho, y'all can check me out on Tanya's Delight, Slice, 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 um, Facebook page to look at more of my work. Most of y'all already know who've been following me. I'm a cake decorator, a personal custom cake decorator, not just a cake decorator. You ain't about to get no um, store cake from me. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. <laughs> I just put it that way. I custom design your cake nine times, 9.99 times out of 10 is not going to look like somebody else's cake. So that's what I'm saying. Custom cake designer. But anyway, you guys, um, thanks for tuning in to the live tonight. It's almost 12 o'clock. I have to get up at, let's see, church starts around 10. Um, I'll probably get up around 5. And make this German chocolate cake that I have to make for somebody. Um, they're going to pick it up after church. So I have to get up really early. But you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Saturday night. If you're out there um, enjoying the weekend, partying, clubbing, you know, whatever you do on the weekend, be safe. Be safe. Um, in the meantime and in between time, prime time squad, as usual, 
Again, stay safe, be blessed, and I'm out. Deuces.